Good morning, and if you are a regular follower of my channel, you will know that I love my MX-5 NC. Now, one of the biggest problems with the NC, apart from all the jokes that everyone says about it being a hairdresser's car, or it being some kind of boat, apart from the stigma that's attached with it, its biggest problem is it's always trying to be like its younger brothers, the NA or the NB. And what I mean by that is it's always trying to shed weight, it's always trying to make itself lighter. Now, it means well, but it's just doing it in the wrong way. This new rust spot was brought to my attention by a chap named Craig in one of the Facebook groups that I'm on. I've spoken to Craig, Craig's a lovely man, and Craig should get more recognition for what he's found. Without further ado, let's go take the car apart. Okay, so minus all the hand tools, I really didn't think that I would actually need much to do this project. Just a power drill, two old wire brush extensions, and some hammerite and some masking tape. I actually didn't need to take my boot lining out because I'd already stripped it out along with the tool kit because that actually weighs four kilos which I think is quite a lot and I like to think of my car as a race car so didn't have to do that step. Next up was removing the connections for the rear lights and these can be really fiddly there's a real technique where you have to get your thumbnail in there. I don't like using a little screwdriver on these because you can quite easily break the plastic clips and this is an old habit of mine but I like to uh, label up each connector so that when I put it back together I don't put the wrong connector in the wrong hole and blow something up. Don't ask me how I know. I think these are 10mm, 310 mil bolts. And the light should come out. Then undo the three 10mm nuts holding the light onto the body. My socket actually wouldn't fit over these because the studs were quite long so you would need a deep 10mm socket. And then I thought that the light would just slide straight out but there was something holding it in in the far right corner and obviously not wanting to damage my paint I applied masking tape to the bodywork and to the screwdriver I'm pretty sure that light had never been off in its life so you can see uh, 13 years worth of dirt in there look at all that Blech. And there's the cheeky culprit that was holding it in, just a little plastic snap rivet. So obviously then just have to do the same on the other side. You can see the overspray here on the boot. In here you have these little flaps, look. Let the air out the boot, one way. That's weird. So there were two more screws hiding behind the number plate, so that was the next thing to come off. And then my next door neighbour started the lawnmower, so time to have a cup of tea. And these ones are eight millimeters and very inaccessible and quite rusty. Next up there's three screws holding the rear wheel arch liner in and some of these are obviously quite rusty because they get the spray off the rear wheel and with a job like this again with so many different size screws I like to bag everything up and label it and the last screw on the rear wheel arch liner is actually underneath the bumper and I tried for ages to get this out so there's a bolt and a nut holding the two pieces of plastic together but over time the rust had basically bonded the nut and the screw together and the only thing holding it is a thin piece of plastic so the first thing to break is that little plastic housing inside the nut and what's happening here is that the bolt and the nut assembly is actually just spinning freely inside the plastic housing and you can just see it there that's the nut and the end of the bolt sticking through the plastic it was at this point that I actually realised I didn't need to take it off and I could already access the rear bumper screws so you really don't actually need to take the screw and nut assembly out. Then same on the other side, remove the two wheel arch liner screws. Next up there's two screws on the top of the bumper. Then there's two more plastic pop rivets. These are the same kind that hold the uh, boot liner in. Really nicely engineered pop rivets, actually quite like these. So then there's two final screws under the number plate. I actually left one of these in because once I unclipped the bumper from all the various clips holding it around onto the car, it was just going to fly off. And then for the two sides of the bumper, you need to pull outwards away from the wheel. And there's about four or five plastic teeth holding it in on each side. And then from this point, all that's actually holding it in is that one screw underneath the number plate. And then your bumper's free to come off, but obviously mine's a little bit more tricky because it's still got those wheel arch liners in. But there you have it, pretty quick and easy to get the rear bumper off. And make sure you put this in a safe place so you don't scratch it. 17mm. There are three nuts each side holding this rear bumper support on. 
And you know, these are done up reasonably tight, so you need a bit of force to get these off. You can actually see the heads of these nuts are painted as well, so this rear bumper support is actually on the car when it goes for paint. And you will need an extension to get that last one off. Very kindly, Mazda put a big hole through the support so you can uh, thread it through, so you have easy access. Again, same method as with the rear bumper. I left two of the nuts loosely on, just so that the uh, support didn't fly off when I'd uh, undone all the nuts. And then all that's left to do is hold onto it with one hand, take the nut off with the other hand, and it should just slide straight off. And there we are, 13 years worth of rust. Actually not too bad, I didn't think. First things first is to get rid of all the rust, and you've got to wear eye protection for this, so straight on with the sunglasses. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I don't have a bench yet, so uh, on the floor it is for me. Next up was to wash the support with some soap and some water to get rid of all that nasty dust. And then I used some paint thinner to get rid of all the grease on the bumper. Not the best solution to prepare this surface, but as long as you leave it to thoroughly dry. Obviously this isn't a visible surface, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And as you've seen, I'm doing this in my back garden. So thoroughly shake the hammerite before you use it. This hammerite paint is actually what they call direct to rust. So you are supposed to be able to spray this paint straight onto metal without a primed surface. So I tried to remove as much rust as possible and then sprayed it onto that. Obviously none of these surfaces are visual, so the paint finish really doesn't matter. It's mainly about protecting the metal underneath it. As you can see, I've got a lovely spray booth set up here, Castrol Edge, only the finest. Three coats on each surface, so three on the support and then three on the car. So then after removing all the rust, I taped up the studs on the car and prepped it for paint. There was also quite a lot of rust along the bottom of the body. So in addition to painting the two mating faces of the support, I'm going to do one strip along the bottom as well. And those childproof caps are really a pain in the... And then I carefully applied the masking tape to the areas that I obviously didn't want to paint, as well as covering the exhaust up with a bin bag. and then first coat of paint going onto the car. <coughs> and there is three coats on each surface, but I didn't film that because um, it's pretty much like watching paint dry. Remove all the masking tape off the car and you are left with a lovely hammerite painted finish. And now we're on the reassembly stage, so everything bolts back up exactly as it was removed. Apart from this time, it looks a lot shinier. For the torques on these, I used melons.net. Torque for these nuts is between 37 and 52 newton meters, or 27 and 38 foot pounds. And then I tried to put the bumper back on, but obviously, I still have those wheel arch liners in place. Now I could have ground those off and bought some new screws, but didn't really see the point in that. So I wrestled with trying to get the bumper on. So I took this opportunity to clean the rear light housings whilst I could. And I did the same for the rear lights as well. From this point it's really easy because obviously you know how it goes back together because you've taken it apart so replace the three 10 mil nuts plug the connectors into the rear light you're going to know which one goes where see clever clever i then couldn't live with myself with all this residual tape on the rear bumper supposedly holding the number plate on so i had to clean all that off i then applied some new tape to the number plate and use masking tape as a guide to get it level with the car because I cannot think of anything worse than a wonky number plate. Final step for me was to check that all the rear lights worked and because I had the camera handy I just recorded it and watched it back. 
and I'm happy to say that we're all good. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you know of any other rust spots on the NC, let me know, because I'd love to take a look at them. So for the time being, at least, I know that that spot on my car shouldn't rust away. Just for reference, mine's a 2007 NC1 or Mark III with 52,000 miles on it. I have seen on the group that there's a lot of newer cars with a lot bigger rust holes on them. And I honestly think it just comes down to the life of your car, whether it's kept indoors or outdoors, and where the water's got into that area. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment because I love reading through the comments. Stay safe and I will see you soon.